Right, okay, so yeah, I'm live. Hello everyone. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, had a good day and such. I've been uh, running around trying to get some printers broken. So yeah, it's been a really fun run up to the whole proceedings of things. I never thought I'd have as much fun as I would <laughs> doing a giveaway competition for something. So I'm seeing lots of uh, familiar names popping up on my screen now. So hello to everyone. Hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, so like, okay, basically foundation is shit hot property right now and it would appear because I got over a hundred responses and it's been really difficult trying to figure out the best artists to choose. So it's not a cop out, but I think it's a good way to do it. So I've managed to get it down to 13 of my favorite artists, 13 being my lucky number. And uh, I figured it'd be a good way to do things. What we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the entries now. And at the end, we're going to let the uh, computer generated algorithm choose one out of the 13 to be the winner of the invite and I think that's the fairest way I can possibly do it so yeah it's been wonderful getting to know everyone and um, yeah well, let's let's go through it a little bit so starting with the first artist I'm gonna just do a little showcase and uh, tell you a little bit about why I think it's dope and um, yeah art is a very subjective thing so obviously uh, I'm trying to uh, take into account you know skill uh, how much it grabbed me, the meaning of the art piece, the intention behind it, how much effort went into it and such, yeah? So, if you, if I haven't mentioned you, don't feel bad, you know, obviously this is like mostly my opinion, and everyone's opinion is going to be different, yeah? So, um, I'm going to kick off with uh, the first artist uh, in the draw, out of the, out of the 13, is going to be Miguel Firewolf uh, from Mexico. And Miguel is a digital illustrator, an artist and wait I just gotta make sure I scroll the right way because I've got some dodgy pictures on this and it's for an art project so it's all normal but okay so so that's some of his work there which is super cool really really like what's going on there it's the, the hues and the colors are absolutely fantastic there really like the way the uh, the characters that's a bit of grimness which I'm really a fan of some dark art stuff so that's really really cool so if you guys want to check him out he's at Miguel Firewolf on the Twitter and later on when I finish this video and upload it, of course I'll be I'll be writing everyone's names down who are the 13 choices. And having said that, to be honest with you, uh, before I went down to 13 people, I actually got it to 33 people. And I'm thinking I want to do a video just to like talk about some of the art of these 33 people also. I'm not going to have time to go all 100, but uh, I think there are just some such strong entries that I'd feel bad to not talk about. All right, so next on the list, number two, artist number two is... Um, Username at Astral Dust, and uh, their tagline doesn't say where they're from, but we reveal cosmic knowledge with awesome visualizations. That's what their tagline on Twitter is. And this is really strange for me because I normally don't go for this kind of artwork at all, but somehow the textures and the level of the balance of colors and the space and the minimalism somehow really works for me. I don't know why. It's really strange because normally I wouldn't wouldn't gonna be into this kind of stuff, but it's um. Obviously on the camera it's going to be a bit grainy, but there is such a fine level of uh, blending between the separate elements and even though they are computer graphic generated, there is such a high level of texture. I'm looking at these things like I can actually touch them. It's pretty amazing to be honest, yeah. And and again, like I don't, I think they're very curious objects to me. I don't really know what they're about or what they're saying, yeah, but I just look at them and I feel intrigued. Um, and maybe, maybe what it is, you know, maybe one of the things that makes artists great is actually the idea of being very fresh and unique, you know? Like, it's not just about skill. Uh, like, like I was saying to someone earlier in a conversation, like, um, you can have hours and hundreds of hours of effort put into one piece, but it doesn't come out particularly good. You take one, one random photo and you get, the, like, the, the world's best shot ever. So I guess it's like, you know, in art, there is that whole thing about, you know, your career building up, how much investment you put into it, but it's also that luck element as well, but... With this, I think there's no luck at all. I, this is all very carefully composed. This artist, Astral Dust, has got a very, very good idea of balance of negative and sp negative space and color and being able to composite a nice, nice uh, picture. So that's number two in the draw out of the 13. <laughs> so um, number number three is a very late entry into the whole thing. So uh, up, till, up till today, I was still taking in entries. I stopped taking in entries about like half an hour ago. But um, the artist known as Besaraba Ann from Russia uh, tweeted me today. And I must say, I just saw this piece and I was immediately captivated. Um, 
She, she describes herself as a professional noise-making and synthesis research graphic designer and NFT artist. And I just looked at this and I thought to myself, God damn, like this person has got a super good talent of composition. I mean, this is something that I'm very much into, like fitting a lot into one piece. But at the same time, it's quite easy on the eyes somehow, you know? The colours are really, really nice once again. There's some amazing hues in there. And actually, it's looking even maybe nicer on the Instagram live video than... Well, I shouldn't say nicer, but more vibrant on the Instagram live video. But that's looking sick. And uh, one thing, uh, besides, I mean, being a, obviously a really, really nice art piece, there's a little bit of humour involved as well. So, like, I was challenged. Like, I was told, like, there is a cat somewhere in this art piece. So I'm going to hold it up for about three sec. Well, I'm going to hold it up for a little bit. See if you can spot the cat in there. I, I couldn't. I couldn't see the cat. It took me ages, actually. And then in the end, I had to ask, and look, if we zoom in right about, right about there in the corner, there, there, there he or she is. Little Moggy, little cat hiding out in the piece. So I thought that was really awesome, you know, I thought that was really, really nice. And um, the, furthermore, the explanation I was given is that, you know, these, this spiral in the middle, which already looks really captivating and draws your eyes into the center of the piece, um, already has got a, a meaning behind it. So it's kind of like a keyboard, you know. So if everyone who's just joining now, good morning. Um, I'm just talking about how I'm doing this competition thing. So I've selected 13 artists and I'm now going through and showing the 13 best selections out of the 100 or so people that actually joined in. And um, yeah, I'm just describing why I chose these pieces. So you're, you're in a good time. There's still 10 artists to go. So I'm just going to recap. The artists I've actually gone over so far is Miguel Firewolf from Mexico. He's in there. Astral Dust, not knowing where they're from, in there also. Be Besa Besaraba Ann from Russia, she's in there, so that's three of them. The next entry, uh, again, is something that like I just saw and thought, wow, yeah, that's that's obviously speaking about a message. There's some sort of there's something going on there. It was very gripping, and I'll show you the first photo I saw was this one right here. So I thought that was super awesome. Yeah, there's obviously like a lot of intention and meaning behind this piece, and this is by Shuruk Amin who is a Kuwaiti truth teller, PhD, poet, tattooed mum, scuba diver, skipper, Pilates instructor, and all round annoyingly uh, rebellious woman. So I thought that was dope. I thought that was wicked. And especially in such a male dominated culture um, where women don't precisely get their voice to speak out. And perhaps there are quite a few idiosyncrasies in how people live in certain cultures. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that particularly that culture or any particular culture has got its um, lesser or greater share of idiosyncrasies. They all do. But it's good to highlight, to talk about things, you know, so we start a discussion to try and figure things out. And I think art is a great vehicle for explaining and starting conversations. So here's a few of the other pieces. So again, if you want to check her out, she's at Shuruk Amin, S-H-U-R-O-O-Q-A-M-I-N. Shura come in and uh, yeah she's like me she's kind of like just getting into the NFT game recently so I've only been in, been in it for a little while all right so that's number four next up on the line again so it's weird like uh, maybe it's the kind of art that I like to do is not necessarily what's being represented in NFT world but I must say that part of my selection process was very much a case of me saying well look if I'm going to let someone into the foundation then I really would like to see the art that I want to see represented. And I don't want to talk badly about anyone, but I must say that in the NFT art world, as in the real art world, there is a hell of a lot of uh, stuff that barely passes as talent or skill. And I think, I think sometimes it's interesting. You can explain something to me and I'll be like, okay, yeah, well, now I understand it. But the craftsmanship behind it still is uh, a bit lacking. But these pieces here, again, I wouldn't really necessarily go for them, but um, this is by um, Ned Zen who was a creator born in Romania, uh, who currently is based in France. And uh, Sparkles design is hack sparkles. I'm not too sure what that means, but yeah, right on. And uh, this, these four pieces that he posted are pretty, pretty damn cool. Very minimal, kind of like a subtle glitch, if you like. I mean, like a kind of muted glitch, if you like. Kind of something between you might see something at a psychedelic experience or a rave or some sort of optometrist experience. So uh, yeah, that's pretty killer. And his, uh, his website's got more really, really lovely works as well. So I do encourage you to check him out. He's at Ned Zen. Okay, so that was a uh, number, let's see, that was number five on the list. 
So the next next one, uh, I'm laughing because the uh, his his Twitter bio is very funny, uh, as opposed to a lot of people who want to try and get in as much stuff as possible. Um, yeah, like guys, I can see people writing in the chat, but I can't really be bothered to like get involved. There. I'm just gonna roll through this, um, and then I guess I can maybe respond to stuff after. I'm not really sure, but I am located in Bangkok, uh, Thailand. And uh, second one is call horizontal lines. Yeah, so Andy, uh, Mr. Shite, even I should say. If, if you want to pick that one up, uh, you can check out Ned Zen on, uh, on his Twitter. Uh, I'm sure he'd be very happy for a sale. And I think he's currently selling on... I'm not sure, but look, okay, so look, I'll just quickly, briefly bring up his uh, little profile thing that he posted here. So you can have a look at that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to roll on. So this will be the one, two, three, four, five, six artists on the list out of 13 is uh, by <laughs> by Serkan Salkir, who's based in Turkey, and his profile bio simply reads, huh? Exclam- uh, question mark. So I thought that's pretty fun. But yeah, I saw this piece, and this is a piece which I, I think is, uh, it, it, on just so many different levels, is so awesome. Um, I mean, look at that cheeky face, the pose, uh, what's going on down in the nether regions, you know, that cheeky parental advisory coming out you know that's super cool I super dig this and I feel like out of all the art pieces so far this is one that I most have in common with in terms of style and overall kind of delivery and picture and stuff but I could I think I think it's it has to be said that everything that I'm putting forward I I could not do what you do you know it's very impressive seeing it and actually it's been excuse me no matter how what level of uh, artisan or skill level there has been, there's not been one artist who I've not seen that hasn't made me think, feel inspired or made me feel to improve myself. And that's one thing I'm finding in the NFT art scene is there's just so much goddamn good talent out there and people are really pushing. It's like, if, if I go to a gallery, uh, then obviously I see other artists there, but because we're so concentrated and constantly shilling and talking and exchanging and tweeting, it just it just feels like a mad race. And uh, I've, I've never felt so much... Uh, I wouldn't call it pressure, but so much uh, power uh, to create, to make more, to try and compete. I'm quite competitive, so that's, I guess, how it works. Uh, hello, Lewis. How's it going? Every now and then I'll look at the chat, but I'm not generally going to be doing that much. So we're now on to the seventh artist, and um, I must say again, like I think, strange. I wouldn't have uh, really gone for something like this, but it does look sick as all hell. Um, this is by Jeremy Lou underscore. Their Twitter bio reads, headliner of my magic dream world. And when I first saw these, I was like, yeah, that's a pretty cool, you know, photography thing. You know, that's pretty nice. And then I found out these are all computer generated. And I was like, holy shit, man. There's some real amazing detail going on in there. So I thought, yeah, that was really, really nice. And we had a little chat. And and actually, here we go. There's the meaning. The meaning is behind there. I think, I think, interestingly, with a lot of people... um, we don't necessarily know if English is their first language, so sometimes it might be a, get, a bit difficult to get the meaning across with certain things. So congrats, Jeremy Liu, you're in there, nice one. Um, next one on the list is we got a, an artist from Brazil, hyping up a little bit. Who's from Brazil? Who's getting excited? So an artist from Brazil who's a designer, a VFX compositor, a set supervisor, crypto artist, and uh, from speaking to them, I know that's just a recent thing as well. Uh, no, no shame in that. We can switch around. We're creatives. We can dip in and out of genres. There's no no big deal. Um, and lastly, which will be the biggest giveaway, they make motorcycle engine art, which is fantastic. You know, I've never really heard of that before. So that's user at Walter Perucci, and they're making amazing sculptural pieces, very curious objects using engine parts. And you can see as well. There's a little bit of. Um, digital enhancement going on as well so they're not purely uh digital uh, they're not purely engine parts but you know there's there's a little bit of enhancement going on there and that's totally cool and um as you can see here they're already out on the open sea into the deep blue digital ocean sea of ones and zeros so that's that's really cool stuff there um moving along is uh an experimental art and design behind jet black spelt a being a V, Jet Black Brothers, limited edition stuff. And what's interesting is when I got onto Foundation, which was maybe around, I don't know, three to four weeks ago, <laughs> it was like that whole, yeah, vote for me, vote for me, I'll vote for you kind of thing. And have you got an invite? Who's got an invite? It was just a mad rush again. So it was a bit like, 
It's a bit like a cross between the San Francisco Gold Rush and the Bachelorette. Everyone's inviting other people. Everyone's looking out for each other. It was it was a fun time. I do remember that Jet Black or Jet Blue. So so that's how you spell it there. Have a look. We were both on for getting voted in at the same time. So we've been constantly hyping each other, retweeting each other, and stuff like that. And I think that's one thing that I must say, as as possibly annoying. Or, or not so much. Uh, I mean, it's a good system. I'm, I can't knock what Foundation have done. As opposed to Super Rare, where it's strictly enforced by the community, uh, the judges, they decide who gets in and who doesn't. Foundation seem to have found an interesting mix where it's based on invites or voting. And uh, yeah, so I guess Jet Black's been after the invite for longer than most people, I guess. Um, so yeah, so I think, unfortunately, what I must say is because I saved them onto the iPad, you won't see the animated version of this, but this is not only animated, but it's got a super killer soundtrack going on as well. So, so this is just one of many awesome pieces that this dude is doing. And uh, I really, really like the, the textures that are going on here. Obviously it's computer generated, 3D, 3D kind of style, but it's, uh, it's something about them. Oh, this is maybe a more crisp image of the, of the animation I was talking about earlier. But I do recommend having a look at this piece on their Twitter and checking it out for real so um great so i think that leaves us now so like i said so just to, for everyone joining in now i've whittled down 120 odd people wanting the invite for foundation to a list of 13 artists i'm now going over and showing the works of these artists and why i chose them and what we're going to do is we're going to put them into a randomized list thing where, where the website's going to spit out one of those 13 names so we've got four more artists to go now and the next one on the list is um going back to artists that i feel a kinship with or at least on a on an aesthetic level someone who i can relate to very easily as opposed to a lot of these other artists which i think do something very removed to what i do but somehow we're still in the same art world which is very interesting you know we it's rare to be an exhibition where everyone's doing completely different genre art or different styles of art so i find that very interesting so okay the next artist on the list is from barcelona spain and his name is paul and he's an illustrator but he also dares to paint on walls so respect yeah i love a bit of uh, spray paint a bit of wall paint you know get that adrenaline rush going uh it's kind of one of the reasons why i started art in the first place myself uh, a mix of comics tattoos graffiti um, and anime that's kind of my main segue into the art world what made me want to create in the first place but yeah have a look at these awesome sketches which were well i shouldn't say sketches they're, they're finalized lovely ornamental kind of pieces uh and they were created in procreate and i've seen some of the videos of him hey hey dude how's it going so i've seen some of the videos of him doing his thing and drawing them away and uh it's cool to see the animated version of this one thing that's very cool about Procreate is the fact that you can actually export the videos. So yeah, look at that. Look at that gnarly cat. I mean, that's so cool. And look on the side, you have all these eyeballs and the tigers down below and all the various elements. So it's kind of like, I don't know, a cross between Obey and a psychedelic kind of trip. And again, it's weird how maybe Paul will agree, but like the colors are coming out a lot brighter and more vibrant. But uh, yeah, all good. I think either way. So what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing with my eyes here is a lot more muted. But again, it's nice. So it's, it's cool, I've got these like little, you know, uh, notes of the artist on the side, so I'll just hold that up there for a second. So we're down to the last three artists now, and I really, like I said, I don't, I, I don't favour any one artist over another. I feel an extra level of kinship with certain artists who have applied, and a bit more connection in terms of aesthetics or in terms of creation process. But uh, I must say that this next entry is is pretty fucking shit hot and uh, this is an artist from Cambodia and it's the only Cambodian artist who I've possibly met in my whole life I'm not sure uh, I certainly spent a bit of Cam uh, time in Cambodia and there's a rich history of some amazing really really deep uh, sculptural work and religious artwork and cultural artwork that's gone through so I I he's not channeling any of those things by the way I don't feel like I can see any Cambodian references in what he's doing but it's just a pure awesomeness and the guy who goes by the name of P3Y Knort. So basically it's Psy Knort, but spelt with a free instead of an S. His work rate is very high and he's making these pieces in very, very short spaces of time. 
like he showed me one piece he made of an alien and he said it only took him about two or three hours I was blown away I can't believe it and he's making these pieces using a plugin in Adobe After Effects so I've never seen Adobe After Effects used to make art before well yeah look at these they're, they're, not only are the colors gorgeous the anatomy is very very good the positioning the depth the the overall whoops that, that was Paul again the overall composition of the piece is just absolutely fantastic and and I mean like this one here is just interests all over the place you know a nice central focal point some cool uh, I think I think very much suited for NFT work I think something that people will really dig and the buyers will like this reminds me a little bit of uh, Mr Manhattan from a uh, from the Watchmen oh Paul, uh, Psychonauts here so yeah if you want to write down what your inspiration was he's in a chat now so if you want to follow him he's very very talented and very cool we've been talking a little bit and again I just really like the imagination that's going on like you know it kind of makes you think about what's going on in the scene like how did this come about how did this character in the middle get there is that like a human morphing or is that a entity being brought in together through the elements of you know celestial orbits being pulled together and being put to life what's going on there you know very intriguing stuff very cool work nice one so we got two more artists to go and i'm going to reveal who's uh, the winning person everyone give him a follow yeah give give psychonaut a follow he's awesome uh the next artist is coming from also southeast asia hailing from the philippines we've got elvis Columba, and uh elvis surprised me with this piece which i thought i thought i could get through the nft art scene and never give a shit about someone making uh, an astronaut piece and i must say that i was i was wrong because as soon as i saw this really really sweet animation of what looks like a female astronaut um posing on a rock with a butterfly there was a butterfly landing on her or his hand and just chilling there and the legs just gently flapping away like they would on a sort of toddler or a, a young kid you know that was really 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 cool i can see uh walter Put perucci yeah i've actually mentioned you uh and you're in man you're in you were in, in at around number nine or something like that so you're going to be in the draw very soon but again going back to this one piece here the, the this this is again this is an animation so i do encourage you to have a look at um elvis columba's twitter to have a look to see what he's about and have a look at this piece being animated because that's a really, really sweet animation together with sound. A nice composition. So, so yeah. So now we're down to the thirteenth artist. Lucky for some. And uh, on a side note, excuse me. What is it with uh, what is it with elevators that don't stop on the thirteenth floor? Why do some hotels decide to not have a thirteenth floor? It's like we all know it's the thirteenth floor. You can call it A. You can call it whatever you want. But we really know what it is. Yeah, so okay, so so just just in case, uh, just to be very very clear, everyone, I advertised this competition not only on Twitter, I did it on Instagram and also on Facebook, and I managed to in the end pull everyone together onto the Twitter feed. Hello, the world of Nabi, how's it going? Um, yeah, I, I managed to pull everyone together into the world of Twitter, and I'm so happy this this artist did because I think her work is absolutely incredible. And uh, again, it's it's kind of a weird thing where I feel I feel a certain kinship to the to the aesthetic. Is it back to front? Oh, okay, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. So maybe if you stand on your head, it will it'll work out. So have have a go at that, or, or just you know make a screenshot and then uh, show it to your dog and look at your dog's asshole, and then maybe you'll see it the right round. I think that's I think that's how it works. Um, or or just or just wait up and I'll at the end just put the descriptions about all the artists who are featured and put links to them. That'll be the righteous thing to do. Um, so yeah, so this artist, uh, this last artist goes by the name of Emmy. Mirror image, yeah, I got it, yeah, no, I got it. Mi uh, Emmy, uh, I'm not sure where she is from. Um, her handle Twitter is Digital Excreta, which is a pretty interesting name. But um, without further ado, I'll just show you the artwork. Absolutely, absolutely amazing, fantastic stuff there. The level of detail, the level of attention to the character, you know, down from the face, down to certain little tiny elements on the body. The colors, really, really digging these. Really digging these. I think they're fabulous works. And again, she's she says that she... Ah, oh, okay, Dallas, Texas. Thanks for that. Nice one, Emmy. So she tells me she's got a very big project coming up and we'll be uploading a hell of a lot of stuff. Whoops. And again, it's a, it's a weird thing where I could not do what you do, Emmy. I could not do this at all. Well, not yet anyway, but I certainly feel a certain level of weird kinship to what you're doing. 
the freak vibe and the uh, the strange anatomies and the strange ideas. I'm feeling that. I'm really digging those. So yeah, so it's been it's been amazing. I can't, I can't remember what you said how you make these, but yeah, these are really really cool pieces. Really really nice pieces. So I encourage everyone to have a look at her. She's in the chat now, so you can have a look. So so yeah, so that's it. We've done the list of thirteen. So those are the thirteen best out of the hundred plus odd artists who've applied. So once again, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who did apply. And it's been great getting to know you and great chatting with you and great getting inspired and find out your processes about how you make your art and what inspires you, the meanings behind them. I really dig it. I really, really like it, actually. And I think I think in a certain way, I've, I've learned more in the space of two weeks about what drives artists to create than I possibly have in a, in a, in a number of years. So, so it's amazing, again, where we're... We're not separated by terms of age or distance, location, or even style of work we're doing. We're all pulled in together into this NFT rush. And I think what, one thing that's very interesting to me is no matter how successful one might be in the, in the real art world, um, when it comes to selling NFT, we're all going through the same struggles together as well. But I don't feel like there's a level of uh, extreme competition where we kind of push each other out of the way. Everyone's doing their own thing. They're pushing how they like, and we're still retweeting each other. So there's that level of camaraderie and celebration when someone does break through and someone does sell a piece. Um, and I don't think there's one particular magic formula to the whole thing. I can see, I can see, um, I think it's, I think it's Peter, I can't remember if it was, if that was your name, but uh, there's a really nice project out called Crixel.art or Crixel NFT.art. It's in my latest, uh, latest uh, Instagram story, but dude's putting together a 5,000 pixeled NFT piece where people can submit their thing and then selling it off and uh, sharing the profits, basically. So so he's in the chat now. If you are there, so announce yourself and let your project be known. Uh, I'm part of it, and certainly a number of my friends are part of it as well. And I think that's a really, really nice... Again, again. so that's the thing of NFT art for me, is I I love the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Excuse me. It's the, the um, ingenuity. It's the, it's the application of a technology blockchain together with creativity art, and then finding different ways to um, maneuver and give the art a vehicle or to sell it in a different way. But I do like the ownership aspect of it and traceable back to the creator. It's very, very cool. Uh, right, okay, so, so okay, getting down to it, look, I'm just going to prove that the system works, okay? So what we've got here is a website called... Let's see if we can <coughs> both look at it together. It's a website called uh, Random List Generator. And down here, I've written down five examples... So I hope that camel wins out of this, okay? So we're just going to click on random choice here. And it's a dog, so a dog's one. So obviously we're not talking about animals, we're not animal farm. But here we go, here's a list of the 13 people, just so you can see that there's no, no trickery. And, and it's all come down to this one magic draw. Yeah, bro, you, you do that, man. And hopefully, look, I mean, I, I hope every one of you can get this invite. Sadly, I've only got one. But here we go. I've, I've pre-randomized this wrist. It's in no particular order. It's not alphabetical or anything like that. But here we go. Um, in fact, yeah, let's let's get a little let's get a little hype music on. Let's get a little uh, drum roll going. Should have done this earlier, really. Bet everyone's really excited. I'm a bit dragging this out a lot, aren't I? Can everyone hear that? Yeah, there we go, there we go. Boom! Congratulations, Astral Dust. Well done to you. Yeah, party alarm, yeah. <laughs> Actually, let's let's finish with a party alarm. That's a classic tune. I can't remember who it's by, but I know it's a good one. Uh, German tune, let's write that. Oh, speaking, speaking of party alarm... There's a really good remix of a Bloodhound Gang song by uh, by Scooter. Oh, it's Aquagen, isn't it? Yeah, Party Alarm, of course, Aquagen. Right, so let's let's finish with a little little rave, Aquagen. So so fuck NFTR. It's all about this shit, really. Yeah, so that's how we're going to finish it off with a bit of Aquagen party alarms. 
Big up all, stay safe. I want to keep following everyone. Uh, I want to keep engaging with everyone. And I wish everyone big success on the NFT platform. Uh, reach out to me. Let's keep in touch. It's been really good getting to know everyone. Peace.